Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Morning Markets today. Firstly, we'll look back at asset market performance from yesterday, just draw out a few of the trends there and think about the, the impact of those. So firstly, just looking at equity markets yesterday across the globe, really just a continuation of that trend that we saw for the majority of last week, positive equity market performance and indeed, I suppose performance and sentiment more importantly being buoyed by the expectation that the Democratic Party will be able to move forward in the US with the, the 1.9 trillion fiscal support package and that is being a, seen as a positive for, for sentiment in the equity market. In the bond market it has a slightly different connotation, that being that it does increase uh, people's expectations of inflation going forward. So we've seen inflation expectations continue to move up as we've discussed over the past number of months. If we look at sort of inflation expectations where they sit from a break even perspective today, uh, inflation is about 2.2%. So that has is having an impact and we're seeing that in, in the bond yield. So the, the nominal yield continuing to, to move out. So if we look at the 30 year yesterday touched 2% for the first time in about 12 months. Again, if we look at the 10 year, um, out to about 1.17% uh, there uh, from a yield perspective and li little changed on the day. The, the longer end of the curve is more sensitive to inflation and interest rate expectations and that's why you see more of a move there. UK gilts really just held out where they have been over the, the past couple of days since the MPC report last Thursday ending the day yielding 0.48%. The, the one contrast in the, the sovereign bond market continues to be Italy and just the positive momentum that is building behind Mario Draghi um, as Prime Minister and the ability of him to use his skill as a negotiator to form a coalition uh, to really try and move the political deadlock forward there. So we've seen Italian sovereign yields continue to come in ending the day at 0.51%, getting very close to, to that all-time low that they hit of 0.48%. So that, that's the one standout there. I think the other thing just to, to touch on is what we've been seeing in the high-yield market, so those bonds that are issued by uh, riskier companies, those in, in need of financing that have to pay a, a slightly higher rate than their investment-grade counterparts. Now, you'd be forgiven for, for thinking as to, to why they have to do that and how rates have changed there. When I say that rates on average for high yield issuance in the US yesterday came below 4%, so not a, a premium to, to IG, but not that significant premium that we've maybe seen in the past. And that just does speak to the, the hunt for, for yield that investors have and their willingness to, to bid down these rates on, on higher, higher yielding assets or riskier assets. I think the other thing really just to, to touch on from yesterday is the, the continued uh, positive momentum that there is around energy prices, um, oil markets in particular. Saw Brent trade back above $60 briefly yesterday. Just again speaking to the, the structure of the market in terms of the support that's there from a supply a curtailment perspective given the, the quota reductions that we saw from OPEC and OPEC Plus at the beginning of, of January, and that is, is having an impact there. I think looking at economic data yesterday, a pretty limited uh, day really in terms of, of the calendar of, of information. One point that just worth drawing out is the British Retail Consortium data that came out uh, yesterday evening. I think the, the, the couple of things just within that and really stark and, and contrasting is the, the shift that has been seen in terms of the consumption move to online. So if we look at um, non-food online penetration, this time last year it was about 31% of, of total purchases. Fast forward to today, 63.6%. So a real uh, meaningful change in, in online consumption trends key question for us all to be thinking about is whether as lockdown measures change, um, services start to reopen, retail starts to reopen, do we see a change back in that or have we started um, more of a longer term uh, change in, in consumption habits, that shift to, to online. So that's certainly something for the coming 12 to 18 months worth monitoring. I think the other side of that, you know, the contraction 
in, in overall retail sales is, is worth noting. It also sort of highlights the challenge for the Chancellor and to an extent the, the Bank of England at this point in time, given that it doesn't look as if these measures will be eased meaningfully in, in the near term, there will be continued headwinds for a large part of that services side of the economy and something that both the Chancellor and the Bank of England will, will have to consider as we continue to move forward. Looking to the day ahead, um, economic calendar wise, a few things to, to, to look out for there. We get German trade data. Remember, Germany has been one of the stronger um, economies from a manufacturing perspective, albeit we have seen that moderate. Be interesting just to see the December data and what that looks like from an exports and, and an imports basis. As the day moves on, um, later this evening, we'll start to get the inflation data coming out, both consumer and producer prices, firstly in China and then rolling through most of Europe tomorrow. So that'll give um, something to discuss tomorrow in terms of the, the inflation trends that we're seeing there. I'll leave it there at the moment, but please do subscribe on the YouTube channel and many thanks for watching Morning Markets. Subscribing to True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to your YouTube app on your phone, type in True Potential and press the red subscribe option. You'll then be notified as and when new videos are released.